uh, a demonstration I'm calling uh, steer rolling on a steer. Even though I've called it that, uh, you can make a cylinder rolling on a steer, you can make any kind of shape also. What I'm going to do is start out a sphere on top of a, a ball, let's say like a cylinder, uh, a spherical ball, start it somewhere and then let it go while it's rolling, it's going to start speeding up and I want to find out at what angle it leaves the surface of the sphere and then goes on a, a projectile motion path. So I'll write down here, I'll mark where the ball began. I can put it on one of the grooves here of the basketball, okay? And then when it leaves, I'll mark uh, where it left the ball and then measure that angle, right? And then we can see, uh, do the calculations and see if they match. Okay, run that again. Okay, so it's leaving it about here, about down here. So let's do that again. And right about here, consistently the same location. So what I'm going to do is uh, measure the radius of my sphere, and then also measure the arc length uh, of between those two dots, right? Somewhere over here. That of the basketball is 11, uh, 74 centimeters approximately. So the circumference is uh, 74 centimeters. And of course, if I divide that by two pi, that gives me the radius of the sphere. And then I wanna find out the arc length between when it started and when it left the ball. So I get uh, this little, a shorter string. It's gonna be pretty short. So it's just the distance between the, the two marks that I made. So about this, this long, that's gonna be about 11 centimeters. 11 centimeters right here. Okay, so what I can say, well, how many radians does that subtend? That is, that's gonna give me the experimental angle that where, which the solid uh, ball left the basketball, right? Okay, so the S is equal to R theta so S is equal to 11 centimeters, and then R is 11.8. So theta, that's approximately going to be one radian, a little bit less than one radian is that angle. And then if I multiply that by um, the conversion, right, 0.932 rads, and then a pi rads is 180 degrees, okay? So then it's going to be the experimental angle which the sphere left the basketball was 53.4 degrees. Let's calculate now the theoretical, okay? So the theoretical is based on these calculations. Uh, when the ball starts out up here, it has a higher height, and when it goes here, it's a lower height, so it's gonna gain, uh, the potential energy is gonna be lost, it's gonna gain two kinds of kinetic energies, right? It has a tangential kinetic energy due to the V center of mass, and it's got rotational kinetic energy, so, right? so I can say the original height from the, the contact point to this contact point, what's this equal to? Well, if you, this is the center of the circle, this is R, this is the angle, right? This is the angle at which the ball leaves the, um, the sphere. So you can say this distance here is equal to R cos theta, and then this distance is equal to R. So the height difference between when it started and when it left the sphere H is going to be big R minus R cosine theta. So if this ball were to travel all the way, all the way down to the perpendicular point and then leave the ball, what would happen? The theta will be 90 degrees, right? And if the theta is 90, then you're going to have R minus R cosine 90, and then cosine 90 is going to be zero, so the height will be the same thing as the radius. So that makes sense, right? It goes and leaves the ball here, and then the original height is equal to h. Of course, r is left a lot earlier than 90, right? So our equation makes sense. So we're going to say that, uh, let's put this result on the side here, 53.4 degrees. This is our experimental result. So then we're going to say the initial potential energy of the ball converts into two kinetic energies, half mv squared plus half i omega squared. 
then uh, the moment of inertia, I put down what shape of the rolling object. So in our case, it was a solid sphere. So we have here 2 fifths mr squared. Right? We put the moment of inertia of that shape. And then we're going to see that the mass cancels. Then I have here gh is equal to half v squared plus the 2 and the 2 cancel. We have 1 fifths r squared omega squared. At that point, usually uh, in rolling motion theory, we say Rw is equal to the tangential velocity at the tip or at any point along the rim of the object, V tangential. And then if the object is rolling without slipping, then we can say uh, the tangential uh, velocity is equal to VCM. It's the same as the velocity of the center of mass, which we can just call V squared. Uh, so we, no, we don't even have to write the subscript VCM. So we can say here GH is equal to half V squared plus one fifth V squared. So then we're going to have here seven tenths V squared, right? And then we can, this gives us a relationship between the velocity squared and the height of the object, right? And then we already have an equation for the height of the object. The next argument is going to be, at what point does uh, two surfaces leave each other when the normal force between them is zero, right? So let's look at it here from this uh, argument. At a certain point, we have here normal force between the two surfaces. Then you have here mg. Then you have here fs. So looking at the, the equations of motion of the object, so we can say mg sine theta, so then the object is accelerating this way, right, acm. So we can say here mg sine of theta, and the sine of theta is this angle, theta, right, that the, the mg makes with respect to the perpendicular. But that's the same as the angle made from the center of the sphere, of the big sphere, to the, this sphere, right? So this angle, theta, is the same as that angle of theta, right? They're uh, opposite interior angles, right? So this theta and that theta are the same. So we can say mg sine theta, 53.4 was our experimental result. So mg sine theta minus fs is equal to macm, right? That gives you the center of mass acceleration, right? And then in this direction, towards the center, we have a centripetal acceleration, right? So we have here mg cosine theta minus n is equal to ma centripetal, right? mg cosine theta minus n is equal to ma centripetal. So the object is, is experiencing two accelerations, one along the tangent to the circle, right, acm down this way, and then because it's already picked up speed, it has a certain velocity, it has a centripetal acceleration towards the center of the big circle, right? This way, ACM, right? Um, a centripetal, right, towards the center right here. So what we're interested in is the more in this problem the AC, the centripetal acceleration, right? So when the, the top ball, the small ball, leaves the big ball, what happens? The normal force goes to zero. Right? Why does the normal force go to zero? Because as, as it's picking up velocity, the, this is equal to mv squared over r, right? As the velocity gets bigger and bigger, what's happening? The normal force is getting less and less and less and less. So at a certain point, when the velocity is at a so big, the normal force reaches zero, and the top ball leaves the bottom ball. That's why the two balls don't stay in contact, because the normal force gets less and less as it picks up more velocity, right? So we're going to say n equals 0. So we have mg cos theta is equal to mv squared over r, right? But then here we have an equation for v squared in terms of g and h. And then here we have an equation in terms of h relating to theta. So let's relate all of those. We can say v squared is equal to what? 10 sevenths gh. Let's substitute that there. So we have here mg cos theta is equal to m over r. <coughs> v squared equals 10 sevenths gh, right? And then what's going to happen, of course, the m's cancel. 
Okay. So then the next thing I'm going to put is h is equal to r times parentheses 1 minus cosine theta. So then I'm going to have g cosine theta, and then we have here 10 over 7 r g, and then for h substitute r 1 minus cosine theta. So the radius of the big ball didn't really matter when the small ball leaves the big ball. The big ball can be anything it wants. Notice here, the big ball r cancels out. Okay, so then you're going to have here what? We are almost done solving this. And then the g is going to cancel this g. Okay, so then we're going to have here cosine theta is going to be 10 sevenths 1 minus cosine theta. Or we can say 7 cos theta is equal to 10 minus 10 cos theta. Right? And then we can bring this over here. We're going to say 17 cos theta is equal to 10. Cos theta is equal to 10 seventeenths. So from the theory, it's expected that the, the small ball leaves the big ball when the cosine of this angle is 10 seventeenths. So let's put all of this in. Take the inverse. So when I did it, I got 53.4, very, very close result. It depends on when I was doing the string, how good I measured the radius of the big ball and how good I measured the distance between those two markers. But I'm so close that it pretty much is within the errors of the lab. So my percent error is going to be times 54 minus 53.4 over 54. 1.11% error. Very, very good result. So you can see here, uh, I could put any other shape, a cylindrical shape, hollow cylinder, ho uh, 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 hollow sphere. The only thing that's going to change is when you're doing the calculation of the, the, the moment of inertia and uh, V squared, you're going to use the moment of inertia of that shape. Remember when I did the MGH is equal to half MV squared, plus half i omega squared. So if it was a different shape, you would put a different i here, and then go through the same calculations, come up with an equation for v squared as a function of g and h, right? But the constant here is going to be different. The rest of the calculations are all going to be the same. You're going to combine all the equations. Then you're going to get an angle that is slightly different than the, the angle for the solid sphere, OK? So you can see a good example of rolling motion here and then connect it with the concept of centripetal acceleration and the normal force going to zero. Thank you very much.